Welcome to the first ever Isolation Cast. In a time of uncertainty and scariness when we're all isolated from each other, let's use this to bring us together. So today, for our first Isolation Cast, I have a wonderful podcast uh, creator and host who has something really kind of vibrant and fun to talk about today. So I want to welcome Rachel Quirky Shank. Rachel, welcome to the show. Hello, everyone out there, social distancing, doing your part to flatten the curve. Flatten that curve. So Flatten that curve, baby. Rachel, how are you doing? Yes. I, I know this I, is kind of a ooh. scary time, so how are you doing? Um, I am oddly well right now. Uh, if you had asked me that uh, a couple days ago, it would have been very different. Uh, something uh, to note about my particular experience with uh, this quarantine isolation uh, yada yada. Uh, I live in New York City, so a, a lot of the stuff is happening. We're kind of at the the weird epicenter of what's going on. Uh, but personally, I was laid off from my job on February 10th. So I had about two weeks of not having a job to deal with and kind of just do this thing where I was like, well, I don't have a job to go to. And I'm just kind of like home a bunch and on the internet and doing video interviews. So I'm, I'm kind of like two weeks ahead of the curve on it. And I, and Mm -hmm. I finally come out on the other side and I'm like feeling better and I'm feeling less like anxious. And a lot of it has to do with Animal Crossing New Horizons. I'm so excited about that. So for everyone at home, um, hi, welcome. Uh, Hi. So essentially what this is just going to be is every episode is going to be talking about artists and content creators who are finding joy in their moments of darkness. And so Rachel reached out to me this morning. We recorded an episode of another podcast, uh, which will be out the same day as this. Uh, Yeah. uh, I'll have you talk about that show in a little bit. You Um, can't get enough of me. (laughs) Uh, And so uh, I just want them to talk about joy to hopefully help everyone at home find their joy in their moments. So Rachel, what, what are, what is helping you find joy right now? Uh, well, uh, definitely uh, yesterday, uh, was the, uh, inaugural day, uh, Nintendo released Animal Crossing's New Horizons, uh, and I had it pre-ordered, ready to go, like a, like a smarty. I, I mean, I had it pre-ordered digitally, so, you know, it... But still, it means you didn't have pota- to leave the potato house. Potato. <laughs> I didn't have to go anywhere to get it. It just appeared in my Switch uh, yesterday morning, uh. and I, I, I took the excursion to a deserted island that I, uh, that I named Beach City, because of course I did, because I love Steven Universe, uh, nice. and have been spending hours of my day collecting bugs and fish and shopping trees and gathering cherries and selling them for bells or nook miles and i built a house ha ha yes that's a millennial dream i mean a house honestly yeah a house i have a house and storage (laughs) there it's amazing that's brilliant. So you got cherries on your eyes. So I'm going to be honest with everyone. I, n- I love Animal Crossing from an artistic standpoint. I have never played a game. I know it's the only thing getting my sibling through right now. So I am tangentially watching everybody and I will eventually get the game. Um, but I know everybody with this one was a big idea of the fruit. What fruit everybody got. So you got cherries. I got cherries. And how yes. is that working out for you? Uh, good. Uh, my partner also got the game and, uh, he got oranges. So we just, uh, got to the point where we can go to each other's islands. And so he came to my island with oranges and I gave him some of my cherries. So, uh, it's, 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 even though we live in the same house, it was weird to like be able to socialize in this game Mm -hmm. with someone. Um, and I know that there's like online capabilities to do that. Mm -hmm. So if you have animal crossing and you, and you want to play with me on animal crossing, just like, let me know. (laughs) And we can, and we can roam around our islands together. I love that. So talk specifically about a little bit about the story and kind of what you're finding so like every everybody's been so excited about this game so like what is it that's tapping into it for you that is kind of helping you break the monotony I guess or like break break the the kind of dark cycles that we can find ourselves in what is what is this particularly doing that's like opening that up for you 
Um, I think it just has a lot to do with that uh, that very cartoony aesthetic coupled mm-hmm. with the the very joyous music. It's a beautiful game to look at, and it's mm-hmm. an even more beautiful game to listen to. Uh, there, the, the game designers have done just an incredible job of making this feel immersive in the in the same way that that like breath of the wild did you know that Mm -hmm. the sound design and the way that breath of the wild felt when you played it it's like playing breath of the wild but you don't have to worry about like fighting anybody or being afraid or dying it's the i just i can't i can't describe how it feels to be walking around my little island and hear that like nice little ukulele strumming but then I get close to the ocean and the music fades to the background and the sound of the ocean comes to the forefront it's just very meditative so all of a sudden you're just like standing on the shore and you just hear the ocean waves and you can like see the moon in the sky and it's just like it makes you slow down Mm. in just a really incredible way that's beautiful. That's I yeah. Mean, I love the character art. I've always thought, found it so charming and it's so sweet. But you're not the only person I've heard from uh, that has really enjoyed the kind of the immersiveness of this game versus the other ones, um, which I know the kind of the immersive nature of, you know, also we all joke that like it's the only place we're ever going to get a mortgage and a house and all these things. But, like, <laughs> and friends. Um, and friends. <laughs> that you can be in, in the vicinity of. There's nothing so yeah. weird than getting to talk to like Cat or... Or who's my other person? Tuck, I think, are the two Animal Crossing characters that, like, also came to the island. But, like, getting close to them and talking to them is just like, this is already so weird to me. <laughs> we I are love- not social distancing. I am in your face. <laughs> exactly. So there's also been articles that have going been going around that um, have been equating this new game to actually being kind of a queer wonderland. Um, and I know I sent that article to you earlier and you were like, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, could absolutely. You expand, could you expand a little about maybe what you, what you think about that? For sure. Um, I would definitely say that it is really knocking it out of the park when it comes to, uh, gender representation. Um, mm-hmm. what's really nice is when you get the game and you're first set up to go to the island, it doesn't ask you what your gender is. It asks you what your style is. And you have the option of like a short haircut or a long haircut. And it's not really saying like, this is, this is boy or this is girl. Mm-hmm. It's like, what's your style? And of course it's still kind of a binary, but mm-hmm. when you get into like your style, like maybe you pick Pick the short hair, maybe pick the long hair. It, there's still a lot of like relatively good expression throughout. Like you get about eight hairstyles to choose from, a whole bunch of eyes, and all of the eyes are available for everybody. The noses, the mouths are gender non-specific. Uh, the character designs are obviously like not in any way gendered. Everybody's sort of shaped the same. Um, so it's kind of up to you to really like express yourself through this and I what I find really fascinating is I happen to have like a mohawk a pretty a Mm -hmm. a, a growing mohawk but I'm gonna have a weird apocalypse haircut uh (laughs) before this is all over because my salon is closed uh but my partner has long hair so when you look at the two of us him being a a cisgendered male and me being a cisgendered sort of female lady person I guess I don't know I'm questioning (laughs) it's fine we'll figure it out um but you can like see what what hairstyle he has is typically considered maybe more feminine. Like he's mm-hmm. got a ponytail and then I've got sort of like buzzed sides and like this front like bang situation. Mm-hmm. So you really don't feel like you're being locked into a certain expression. Like I feel really, I feel really comfortable like being this, this Chuck character in the game mm-hmm. versus other games where you have to like hyper realize your, your gender identity. Mm -hmm. Uh, And that's, and that's just in picking your character Uh, (laughs) uh, and getting into the gameplay because there is no uh, need for like a romance storyline or anything like, because every other character in the game, if you're not visiting another Island are animals, you know, like my, like Tom Nook, his sons, they're raccoons. I have a cat and a rhino as my compatriots on the island. So it's, it, it, there's nothing sensual about it. So mm-hmm. 
when you're sort of removed from that, it becomes like a safe space where you don't feel, I, I forget who said this, but I think it was one of the, the developers said, this is a space where you never have to feel afraid or worried or, or threatened. Like it is the most non-threatening, the worst thing that could happen to you is like a tarantula might bite you and then you <laughs> pass out and you just wake up in front of your tent. Right. Which I actually think in oddly specific terms, the world could not have asked for this game on a more appropriate day. Because exactly. Because you got like, you know, San Francisco is going more or less on a three week quarantine. I know that's not specific as to what's happening. So don't sh- at me. Everyone and I know New York is preparing New York state as a state is preparing yes. for that lockdown. And, um, you know, so they're I, shutting down all non-essential most, businesses. It's crazy here. Yeah, which I mean, which is, which is important. Cause like I, have been social distancing the best way I can, also living with three people and a cat. You know, it's hard, but, like, it's nice that we can all sit in our different corners of the living room and, like, still talk to each other and be human. Um, Because as a extremely extroverted introvert, I I need to be around, like, if I were a... Probably if I were a supernatural being, I would probably be a psychic vampire for that reason of I, f- I empathically need energy from people. Yeah. And like, cause sometimes I'll wake up and I don't have the spoons to deal with anyone or I am brimming with spoons for the day. And so I think, uh, you know, I had to go to Walmart earlier and target to just get some essentials. And it was strange at the people because this is Florida who were out and about because, they're not being told they have to stay inside. It's being encouraged that you have to stay inside. Yeah. And so, you know, it is, it's a little disheartening to see people aren't taking this as seriously, but you know, not to be doom and gloom, but I think this game, you know, cause my sibling was like, we just have to make it to Friday. They cannot quarantine before Friday. I need this game. <laughs> and so, I mean, I know a lot of people were in that same boat of, and, you know, it's that that time of, I think, because most of us have never had to live through an experience like this, we need those things that we know are going to get us through. Yeah. And so I am so happy that this game is doing that for a lot of people. And I hope a lot of listeners as well, they're, they're going to be cheering at home because they are super excited for this game as well. And just that it is it is bringing you joy which I just, I find so exciting because... Oh, yeah, it, it, it's, it's been the first series of a couple of days where I haven't been overwhelmed with my anxiety. Mm-hmm. Like, today, I, I, I had to venture out and grab some last, uh, like, essentials before New York goes on, like, that super lockdown because we've been trying to be good about going, like, when there's a need, but, like, since tomorrow's the big day that everything's shutting down, it was it was really hard to be out there and and to see other people and to see the shelves and what they look like uh to get to like come back from that and like sit down and just like have this little this little creature comfort that is just Mm -hmm. there it 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 needs to not comment on anything that's going on it's just a tiny little island where you can build a shovel and dig some holes if you want you know, it, and 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 I will say it it seems strange to be so excited about a thing that seems like the gameplay is just like get stuff, trade stuff, do do do. But you're kind of like building into the space, like you're able to take ownership of this entire little island and go. My house goes here. Their tent goes here. I'm gonna put the museum here. It's it's got that 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 sort of addictability of like a Farmville, like clickbaity kind of game, mm-hmm. but it isn't clickbaiting you. It is letting you make the decisions that you want to make this space feel like you want. Like my partner is totally just like buying big blue metal barrels and putting them around a neighbor's tent. He's like, no, they love it. And it's just like, why are you trolling this character? It's like, I want to. I'm just over here like setting up like little campfires with little hay bales. Just like, here's a place to sit by the ocean if you want. Like, no, like it's just me. And I just like am homemaking this island, you know, because like I have this need to like host and, 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 and give space 
spaces. And I'm just like, here's a nice little social space with a fire. And like, if you want. <laughs> None of my characters care in this game, but it's for me. I'm going to take a nap here. Uh, <laughs> I, I love that. Oh, that's, yeah. that's so beautiful. Now, like, you're selling me, and I was like, shit. I'm not, I'm going to go fucking download this game now when we get off of here. Oh yeah. And and what's so and what's what's so lovely about it and I didn't think I was going to like it, it translates to real time. So in the game mm. when I log on, it's whatever time it is where I am. So the first day that I played, like I did a bunch of the tasks and then had this like like this like museum character that was going to come but that character wasn't going to come until the next day and the next day was our next day so I got to wake up this morning and be excited because this owl is here now and I'm going to talk to this owl and I'm going to like find him creatures and and I don't know what the next day is going to bring but it's something to look forward to in a weird time where you don't really know what what to look forward to, you know, cause so much yeah. of our, our media cycle has like stopped, you know, like we're not, we're not really getting any new movies for a while. Yeah. And like, it's weird to be in this space, like near the end of like the spring season of television, you know, like mm-hmm. Steven universe is about to end like and that's this or good. next weekend. And, and that is for good. That is, and that's it. And we're done. done. Yeah. And so yeah. it's just, anything that like we've been sort of mm-hmm. accustomed to, you know, I look forward to the end of the week because this is when this is going to happen. Or I look forward to this date because this is when this movie's going to drop. It's nice to have mm-hmm. a game that is in our time making you wait for things that you want. Right. Well, and I think honestly, it sounds weird, but like it's been, alarming but also kind of funny on social media when people go wait it's saturday what what time is it and i go oh babies oh my god like it's it's obvious that like people like myself are front ending the humor to hide the kind of horror and the darkness they're feeling yeah but i think anything that we can crave normalcy like i'm still teaching through the end of the semester and so we're st- like, I'm still trying to get up and shower every day and put on mm-hmm. real clothing. Yeah. And, like sit down at my computer and know I have to do these Zoom meetings and I have to teach and we're doing these things um, to still create normalcy, which yeah. I think is important. And so even that you all are able to have this normalcy in this fantasy world because it gives you something to front, like it gives you, like you can't. Like, I'm playing Pokemon Sword and Shield right now. And, <gasps> I just uh, finished Shield. It's great. <laughs> I'm I'm loving it, and it's really immersive and beautiful. And also, I'm, I'm an Anglophile, so the fact that it's beautifully, quirkily European, I love. And the new Pokemon are stupid, and I love them. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, the, sh- the stupid sheep. I love it so much. Oh, Lulu's the best. The older I get, the cuter things are, which is where I go, God, my mater, like I need to be a parent so bad. And right now, cause I buy so <laughs> many, I buy so many plush that look like babies. I bought a, f- I bought this figment at Disney and he's about three feet long and he's sleeping. And I put him over my shoulder like a baby and carried him around yeah. Epcot with me the other day because it just felt natural. And so long story short, but like a Pokemon game, you can kind of push through. And a lot of people, because Sword and Shield was shorter than a lot of a lot of the other games we do have the dlc coming um but i know that if i like i'm tempering the amount of time that i spend in it but it's so nice that thought in animal crossing of you can keep doing things but you need to put the game down at some point and you can come back to a surprise tomorrow you can come back to a new day tomorrow so yeah. even if you wake up and it's just moving from your bed to a couch and then you log into this world and it sounds silly for, I guess, people that don't video game or don't like the kind of immersive nature of this kind of thing. You're able to still acquire some normalcy and develop a pattern of um, uh, kind of what you need to do, a, a schedule like everyone needs. Yeah, to, yeah, stick you, to a, you stick to this idea. Yeah. And it also it's also sort of created, at least in my household, a sense of reward you know Mm -hmm. like at a certain point we have to stop and 
and do household chores, but it's something to be like, hey, I'm going to pause this. I'm in a good, I'm in a good place. I'm going to go clean my bathroom, which I did yesterday. Holy socks. I scrubbed it. And I, I felt good about it because it like, yeah. it instilled in me that like feeling of like, make your space, you know, and it'll feel nice. Mm -hmm. And it like, is sort of a simulacrum of that reward feeling where you're like, mm -hmm. oh, I cut down the tree. I did all the things I have to do. Now I have these bells. Wait a minute. What if I did my dishes? <laughs> right. Will I yeah. feel, and it like, it's really building that like that feeling of like moving forward and it's gameplay is that it's like you keep doing things and it's like, ah, oh, you did the thing. Here's, here's the, here's the prize. It's a tiny prize, but it adds up. And then all of a sudden you're like buying a house, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> build it a museum. I'm told that's what I'm supposed to be doing in my thirties, but right now I'm just sad that Disney world is not open. So I don't yeah. know, maybe I'm doing my thirties wrong. <laughs> I'm just, it's... I'm just nervous that we're going to go through the whole summer and I'm not going to get down to Coney Island. Like that's where my fear is. I'm just like, but I need to go to the ocean for real. I, I mean, I, you know, none of us kind of know what's happening right now for a lot of reasons, good or bad, but I think seeing what other countries are doing and they're being smart about their time frame, even when they weren't smart in the beginning, like we are not being, there is a light, especially coming out of China right now. Um, and so I think normalcy, I think, is a lie that we're going to try to put on ourselves for a while because normalcy in this kind of time is not going to happen. And that's, yeah. not a, that's not a bad thing. No. Because I'm seeing Norm people... Normal for, yeah. for our country was still pretty terrible. And it's interesting yeah. to watch this, like awakening and this new discourse even just in the ideas that that like I've sort of been carrying as 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 a leftist as a young burgeoning mm -hmm. member of like this this left leaning political community to sort of be like I I have class consciousness I understand mm -hmm a few things, you know, like I'm in no way an expert. Like you can hear yeah. me totally botch uh, begging for a rent freeze in, in New York state. Uh, but like to watch people that I, that I follow and I know all of a sudden be like, isn't it weird that these like really rich people are sad. They don't have to worry about how they're going to eat soon, right. you know? And it's, it's so fascinating. And, and, you know, an apocalypse isn't necessarily like the ending of all things. It's just mm -hmm. an integral shift of things. And I just am holding out hope going yeah. forward that we're going to snowball into this idea of, of being there for each other and, mm -hmm. and supporting one another. You know, I'm seeing so many, so many beautiful creators like sharing their art mm -hmm. and other people responding to this, you know, like I wrote a book of poems and people are like, I'm going to buy your book of poems. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to kick that to you and, and help you. And just like, even though we're, we're physically isolated, hopefully we will not stay uh, right. like electronically isolated or mm -hmm. emotionally isolated from each other. I, I love that you bring this up because I, follow a lot of people on social media. I'm, you know, I, I have moved a lot because I have done that thing where I thought you had to succeed in college in your tw early twenties and I didn't. And so I moved around a lot. And so I know a lot of different people in different walks of life. I've spent time in New York. I have spent time in upstate New York. And so also, you know, the difference between the cities and our rural suburban areas um, and seeing artists who I've always known to call themselves artists, but I haven't seen them do work who are now, I don't want to say flourishing, but like they don't have to put up with the bullshit of their daily existence in the way that they thought they did at this point yeah. because they're able to work from home or being laid off is the worst, but they're making some beautiful things. Um, and while I do want to preface this with, if you are an artist, you should not feel pressure to make art right now. You no, do it's not okay need to feel that pressure. It is okay to be sad. It is okay to just wake up and do your thing and lay back down or be sad that your gigs are getting canceled because it fucking sucks. Especially like I work in theatrical design. And so seeing beautiful costume and scenic renderings of shows that aren't probably going to get realized now and it sucks, but like, I'm so proud of the work they've done. 
um, and the shows, how beautiful those shows would have been. Um, mm-hmm. But, like, you know, it's nice to see people who suddenly are also dropping the masks. I, I'm seeing a lot on social media of, like, people, and, you know, I'm guilty of this as well, having a mask that you kind of live through and you present this personality or this thing or you're, especially with, like, cis white gay dudes have like this thing and that's a lot of my friend group and now I'm watching them put the mask down and like they're making groups to like watch fun movies together on Facebook or they're like hey these queer movies are really important to us anybody who has an interest in like seeing why we're now changing queer cinema and queer television and queer art because these came before but now we want to do better I think are Mm -hmm. really cool or just like people that are just painting every day and doing really cool things which is actually why I wanted to do this because like my thing is I've started podcasting on my other show and I really love that. And I love getting to guest on y'all show and having all of you yeah. and this thing. And so, but it's like, it's the only thing I can do because I can be a very negative person. And so I want us to find moments that spark joy and happiness and make us like really. Yeah, for those sure. Those moments and- of like, cause like millennials, it's really easy to make those like, Oh yeah. If I was just dead tomorrow, it'd be fine. And I'm seeing a lot of people going, you know what? That's not funny anymore because we're there yeah. and I don't want that. And so that's, I guess that's also something nice that I've seen that's come out of this. That's been really lovely. Yeah. We, we've, we've transis we've transitioned past our like gallows humor and now we're like, Oh, we're looking at the gallows actually. Hey, do you need help? You okay? Yeah. Hey, yeah, you you, what's up? You fine? You yeah. fine? Yeah. You fine? Y'all right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, for sure. And, and, and to speak to the, the idea of, uh, artists being able to take the time and like get in a good headspace before you start creating, trust me, I have been that person. It's like, since I got laid off, uh, in February and doing like the job hunting thing and then not being able to do the job hunting thing has just wrecked me emotionally and I have all these ideas and plans that I want to do you know like making videos or doing like live Mm -hmm. streams or whatever and I didn't I wasn't in the right place to give that yet and Mm -hmm. that was very difficult and and I may not be in the right place to give that still but like I've I've made peace with that you know Mm -hmm. like if it's gonna happen it needs it needs to fuel you And fuel those you share it with. And I was not in a place to fuel that or, or give that fuel, you know, like you talked about having the spoons and it's just like, it's okay. If you're, if you feel bad that you haven't made art with your time off, don't because it's okay. Because now Mm -hmm. is the time for you to like heal inside and get comfortable and, and, and worry if you have to. You'll get through it. You will. Yeah. I, I promise you. I, as someone who's coming out on the other side of it, living in the same world that, that you all live in, we're going to get through this. We're going to be okay, and we're going to find ways to connect with each other and make stuff in, in ways that we never thought possible. And it's going to be scary. It's going to be, oh, my God, it's so scary. Mm-hmm. I'm so scared all the time. But, like, if we got each other, we got this. We can yeah. do this. Yeah. That's so beautiful. And and something that's really nice, too, is seeing people who, for whatever reason, didn't see... Like you said, you were very aware of our class system, which, if anyone thinks it's not, I don't know how you cannot see that. But it's it sucks that so many people are being laid off or are out of work and are worried about their, new, their next paycheck. Yeah. Um, but now they understand what, like, 80% of Americans feel like. And I think we've already seen, like, after two days, compassion, which is something that I think Americans lack even when they think they have it. We've seen compassion for someone, you know, someone reaching out and going, hey, I used to love seeing you in shows in high school and college, and I know you're doing this professionally now, and I want to give money straight to artists, and so you were someone I thought of. And Mm -hmm. so, like, those are those things of where people are suddenly starting to look on the smaller level and so I, what I kind of would love to see is this idea of like the large box chains, the, the money moguls 
won't be as successful after this because people are still maybe going to run with that idea of let's support the people where I can directly see the impact of that caring and that giving and that that use. And so, um, you know, I say that as someone who is transitioning into a job with one of the money moguls. But, you know, um, you know, it's one of those that I think I, the compassion that I've seen in the last week, I that's something I hope we can continue to hold on to mm -hmm. um, in many ways because we're never going to go back to what we had before no. when this is over. And I think that's fucking wonderful. I, think I it's, don't want to uh, go back to where we were. Yeah, no, because what we had is what got us here. If you th if you think yes. about it, like what what we what we were doing, and I'm going to speak just for the American experience. Obviously, I I've never lived abroad. I do, I cannot mm -hmm. speak for any other place than the U.S. We have had a system of of such disparity between the haves and the have-nots. And it has it has permeated our entire culture, but we have been colonized in our minds to think that if I work really, really hard, I can also become a have. And and in in a scarcity mindset where we are, that is not possible. It is why you see so much pushback for for policies that enforce solidarity and an even playing field. Mm -hmm. Like you look at a concept like Medicare for all or, mm -hmm. or, or, or even just like, a, 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 like a stipend, like a, like a base income for everybody. And someone's like, mm -hmm. well, you didn't work for that. And it's like, but you don't have to work for it. We've earned it because we are humans living on this planet and our, and our bodies have needs for mm -hmm. for food and for homes and for medical care and and it's and it's that kind of like american individualism ideal mm -hmm. where the concept is you don't deserve it cuz you didn't work for it but what if we all got it what if we all got yeah. the thing and then we could thrive and flourish it's interesting to hear that argument that Einstein was such a such a brilliant lightning in a bottle kind of situation but I look at it as I'm sure there were hundreds of Einsteins mm -hmm. in Einstein's time but they had to work meager jobs and slave wages yeah. they didn't they didn't have the 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 good fortune or the the their needs met like we fight so mm -hmm. hard to get our needs met that we aren't able to self actualize mm -hmm. And I hope, and I hope, and I and I and I and I wish, and I and I and I try and manifest this idea that if we're all given the like the the same abilities to thrive, we will because we want to. Think about how stir crazy we all feel now that we've been inside for a while and we're like, well, I'm not working, I'm not doing anything, I'm not contributing mm -hmm. to a thing, even if it's like a job I dislike. I'm not moving. And we want to move and we want to work. And we and if you look around us, we want to be there for each other. And I hope so much that this is an awakening to that for for everybody. Yeah. And then we can all just yeah. go live on an island and collect cherries. <laughs> Listen, I would love because I would love to go back to a base bartering system. It's the one thing my grandmother, through a lot of her faults, always talked about was the people always found a way to take care of themselves in community because of, you know, that's what they had to do and bartering was a thing and you would trade goods and services with each other even, you know, at, at the point that it had become capitalist and everything. But it was because the smaller community knew what the community needed and so they still mm -hmm. served each other. And so I hope there's going to be a lot of focus on community after this as well. Yeah. Just everybody, listen, everybody, you've got the free time. Go pick up uh, Kropotkin's Conquest of Bread. Give it a read. It, there's uh, free audiobook versions of it. Uh, listen, there's a there's a lot of like not eco friendly stuff in it, but some of the ideas about sharing and decentralization, uh, anarchist thought. It's it's an incredible it's an incredible work. It's an incredible piece of theory um, that really is practical. That's all. Just read The Conquest of Bread. <laughs> I love that. That's 
That's amazing. <laughs> Start so, reading Emma <laughs> Goldman. <laughs> Just get in it. Yes, Join Emma me Go- over oh. here. Come along. Uh, one of my favorite musical theater characters in all time is Emma Goldman in, in Ragtime. I love her. Uh, which, you know, it's her fictionalized version of herself, but... Yeah, um, of course. So, But what's something I think is interesting is right now, one of the few things that people are able to continue to make in the way that we are is podcast, which is yeah. something you and I both do. It's it's how we met. And so I think maybe I would like to transition into talking about, you know, the, the other aspects of you, of the artist that you are, you, you know, your podcast creator, um, and things if you want to talk to everybody at home about the shows that you have and kind of the aspects of where you approach your art from and, and where, you know, where you all got your start with the shows and uh, hopefully everyone will uh, give you a tune in. Oh yeah. uh, Yes. Um, So I, I currently do two podcasts, uh, uh, maybe more. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Um, (laughs) And the first one uh, I do with uh, a dear long, long lasting friend of mine, Matt Storm. Uh, We sit down every other week. We talk to a guest about what they've most recently watched. Um, We really get into like how, how we feel about the things we're watching and then get into uh, uh, info about our guest. you know, ask them like, what are they doing? How do they feel about media? Um, It's really casual. It's called screen snark. And uh, that sort of came to fruition because Matt and I at the time were very much like, let's talk to people. Let's all be friends and let's do some stuff. Uh, And, uh it was the first moment where I personally just got to be me as like a thing. You know, like before that I was an actor. So, of course, it was a lot of you mm-hmm. are Constance or J- Jezebel or D- 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 Rip Van Winkle. I don't know. Like it was always that. And I'd always had I'd always had a dream in my heart that I just wanted to be me in front of an audience. Uh, mm-hmm. And so podcasting really gives gives me that sort of fuel to sort of like be me, a, a bumbling and passionate and sometimes the, the ridiculous and, and talking out of my ass. But that's who I am. That's how I function all the time. So it's, it's definitely a nice avenue to be me for others you know to use that and and Mm -hmm. that fuels and then it fuels you know the uh so yeah so I'd 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 been in love with podcasts for years before starting Screen Snark like I listened to Mabim Bam uh How Did This Get Made Worst Idea of All Time um so I just was really familiar with pop culture breakdown podcast. So it was a no brainer to start screen snark. And then shortly after I started screen snark, uh, I was very fortunate to, uh, collab very briefly with, uh, my now co-host from the, the infinity podcast, Scott Thomas. He had started a show called on the rails and his first episode was, uh, talking about infinity war with me and a YouTuber named Patrick Willems. And the whole premise of On the Rails was it was a drinking game that none of us knew all the rules to. So each guest brought drinking rules. So, like, mine was if Scott ever talks about our job that we have together, I will make him drink. Um, I didn't know Patrick at the time, um, so I didn't make any rules for Patrick. uh, But we had so much fun, and we didn't get through the movie because we were talking about Infinity War. We didn't get through it the first time. So we came back a second time, and we started drinking before we hit record on this. And I, at the start of the episode, was just like, we should just do this every week. This is, like, the <laughs> best. We should just get together and talk about Marvel movies, like, all the time. So, anyway, we've been doing a weekly uh, pop culture breakdown of the Marvel Cinematic Universe uh, since 2018. And uh, we, uh, we're we figuring out what to do now that the, that the Marvel machine is on a pause. Uh, but that is called mm-hmm. the Infinity Podcast. And it is... Both these shows are a, a, a breath that I get to take every week where it's just, I'm just doing this. I'm sitting down and, and no matter what is happening outside, we are on this mic and we are, we are talking, you know, and it's, it's, it's what I needed and what I need more now. 
I love that. That's beautiful. And I love, I'm a big fan of Screen Snark. I have not made the jump into the Infinity cast yet. It is on my list. It's uh, okay. Don't even well, worry about it. Well, I'm a huge Marvel fan, so like I want to... I want to jump in. <laughs> um, I do have a question, just kind of a thought-provoking question for you. What are three your top three things that you're hoping for the next phase thematically or something new that they're going to do better than they did before with Marvel movies? I'm, I'm sorry, could you repeat that? I got a little... Yeah. Yeah, we, we, it's if anything is a constant right now, it's that everyone's Wi-Fi sucks. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, so I think for um, moving forward, if there were three things you would like to see Marvel do differently that they weren't doing well before in their movies, what are those kinds of three things? Or maybe a thing that you're hoping will happen uh, in the longevity of the, the MCU. For sure. Uh, this is really funny. We were just doing the most recent episode of the Infinity Podcast, which is actually going to be out before this episode. Time gets, t- listen, listeners, time gets weird whenever you do a podcast because you're thinking about release yes. dates and you're kind of living yes. in in like the past and the future and the present all at the same time. So uh, I, I definitely like kind of just started thinking about this while sort of rapping on the Infinity Podcast. Um, I would love to see slashed budgets i would love to see a marvel movie with like a 14 million dollar budget uh that's just you like i would love to see and i would and and i would love to see this just like across the board when we when we're back to making movies like see what we can do based on what we need for it not just mm-hmm. we're going to we're going to have this cuz it's here you know we're going to have the big CGI punch battle cuz it's here and we got to but i would love to see what can be done when we're sort of rethinking economically like who like what is this for why why is this a 2 billion dollar project when mm-hmm. we could do it for a quarter of that mm-hmm. um that is what i would love to see i think there's so much good and joy and wonder when you look at older movies and you see them working with a smaller budget, you know, like the old time, the early 2000s action movie, you know, like we're like, we, mm-hmm. we bought an explosion, we bought mm-hmm. one, we made it, it happened, we got one shot, we did it. It was really crucial. We got it right. You know, that like sort of joyful feeling of like, we only have so much that we can do. Like, I would love to see the purse strings just like get pulled for for media. So all of a sudden it's not this like extravagance. It's now kind of living in in that in that art where it is, what do we need? We're going to do this with what we need and we're not going to do any more than that. You know, I would love to see that first of all. Uh, and that's, and I think that would just like extensively change the, the way we see movies and the way that they're made and the way that we'll engage with them again. Cause it feels like a lot of times we're just kind of obligated to go see the Marvel movie at this point. You know, it's just kind yes. of, we're, we're, we're like plugged in, we're subscribed and we gotta, but it would be so interesting to see just like a pared down version. Like, I don't know, uh, like, like a really insular, like dramatic comedy that is Matt Fraction's version of Hawkeye. Lonely mm-hmm. guy living in Brooklyn, just fighting for his apartment building. That's it. Like really like, closed local like no more big crazy stakes like we, i i also think that we should maybe end the 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 reign of the world ending event going forward maybe this is number two i think this is seamlessly getting into that because guys we've been there now we're here like let's not i don't mm-hmm. i don't want to revisit end game or infinity war because it feels so tough like just to think about like a bunch of sad superheroes in a world where like so much of the population is like gone. Mm -hmm. That's so ghoulish to me. And so Mm -hmm. I think moving away from it's the end of the world as we know it to more of like an Ant-Man or the Wasp, like we got to do a heist or Mm -hmm. we, we got, we got to, we got to protect our neighborhood or we, you gotta, gotta get on the ship and stop the guy. Like, I gotta stop mm-hmm. the guy. Um, and I would love to bring back more baddies. 
uh, some like solid like baddies that just like they got a plan. It's a it's an evil plan. I just rewatched uh, Austin Powers International Man of Mystery, and <laughs> okay, okay, and and I just need more of that kind of Doctor Evil. Like he's a bad dude, mm-hmm. and we know he's a bad dude, and he wants to do bad things because he's a bad dude, and it's not like. I'm the evil mirror image of your of your character or I'm the I'm the concept of winter I guess frozen uh but like some like nice Ursula kind of baddie that's just like you love them so much you kind of like love them more than your lead cuz they're just like so nasty and they love it like give Give uh, uh, Sam Rockwell another go at Justin Hammer and let him just, like, live in this evil world where he's just, like, Mm -hmm. the guy. He's going to do the bad thing, and he loves it. Ugh, that's it. Like, smaller budgets, smaller stakes, better baddies. Those are the three things I want. Great. Well, and I think that's something where um, I loved the MCU on Netflix because... While the scope in Defenders got a little large because, you know, we're dealing with dragons and things because of Iron Fist, the scope of like Daredevil, Luke Cage and Jessica Jones were so beautiful because they were these characters. And like it was a confirmed this week that um, Charlie Cox is playing Matt Murdock in the third Spider-Man movie. Um, I would I love Kingpin. I think Kingpin is one of the most brilliant Spider-Man villains because it also is the Sinister Six. And while they are these kooky costumed villains, yeah, I, I miss, and it's something I love about Spider-Man and I also love about X-Men in very many ways is it was always a battle for New York and it's always so centralized to New York. So even in, mm-hmm. even in um, Spider-Verse, where that was a, you know, a multidimensional problem, it was still a New York issue. And I, that's, that's something about why I always love going back to Spider-Man because we then pull the scope all the way back. Yeah. Like you, Um, if you ever listen to the infinity podcast, you will always hear me say repeatedly, I like my Spider-Man when he's working class and he suffers. That is when Spider-Man is, is us. That is when he is is the most empathetic and relatable. When when Peter Parker is struggling to choose between telling the woman that he loves, that he loves her, and stepping away because he knows that he can't bring her into his bullshit is beautiful. It's yep. tragic. And I live for it. That first Spider-Man movie, that Sam Raimi Spider-Man movie. Mwah, 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 mwah. I have liked all three of the first Spider-Man films so much in so many ways because even Andrew Garfield's I really liked. And then I think Tom Holland is just the most special cinnamon bun ever. He is such a delightful young Peter Parker. I need him to Um, suffer. I need him to suffer more. Yeah. I'm sorry. Like he, (laughs) he needs to he needs to stop being bankrolled by a billionaire and I need him to suffer. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, I think we're going to see that coming up soon. I don't know. I also, I'm secretly hoping because I love the character of Shuri in Black Panther so much, and she is so wonderful. Yes. I would love to see an alternate version of the Young Avengers with both of them at the helm. I think it'd be lovely. I think it's time. Yeah. Um, expe- well, it's, you know, it's hard because Hawkeye's been indefinitely pushed back, and that was going to be our Kate Bishop introduction, but we've got Cassie Lang, and after WandaVision, we're going to have the twins which is lots of delicious gay content which is why for me I'm having a really hard time giving a shit about the Eternals as it's coming up because I was like it's going to be Angelina Jolie being a demigod and being gorgeous and I just don't care <laughs> and I yes but it's going to have Kumail before. but it's going to have Kumail Nanjiani as a Bollywood star it's, which oh, I think it, is phenomenal <laughs> He and he looks so delicious. I know I never want people to just get super ripped, but he looks so delicious. Oh, uh, he looks so good. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's one of those things that looking at the future of the Marvel movies because it is with Disney, it's hard. But 
I mean, I've always been a huge Marvel fan. I will always see the movies, but I would love things that are more on like Spider-Man or like I thought Black Panther was an excellent story on a really small scale. Granted, they have tons of money and technology, but I'm interested to see what they do when Black Panther 2 is them bringing down the borders and helping out the African continent and what that will mean. Um, And I swear to God, if Storm is not in that movie, I'm going to burn the I'm going to burn everything down. Yeah, I listen. (laughs) I just I need I need this love triangle between Aurora, T'Challa and uh, oh, gosh, Nakia. 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 Like, I just, I I need this. And, like, what I need is I need to see Chadwick Boseman just be this, like, really stoic king character. And, like, he cannot flirt with either of them. And he's just like, I don't know what to do with my hands. And it's just like, this is perfect. (laughs) He's so bumbling, and I love it. (gasps) Uh, Though it does. Such a doofus. It's sad right now because Wilson Duke, Winston Duke is the only person who's not so far signed to return as Umbaku. Uh, the the thick bay of bays, and I have to have I have to have Umbaku in Black Panther 2. Cause listen, if he agreed to do Infinity Wars and Endgame, he's gonna agree to do another Black Panther movie. I know he's yeah. busy, and I know he's very he's very uh you know, very popular now, but um yeah, it's uh yeah. Yeah. Well, that yeah. is amazing. Uh, and so uh, before I ask you our last question, I'm pulling a, you know, I'm pulling a trick from Screen Snark. Oh, before boy. Before I ask you your last question. Now I'm nervous. Can, well, where can everyone find you online? Uh, yes, uh, please find me on Twitter. Uh, it is at I am Rachel Shank, R-A-C-H-E-L. S C H E N K. Uh, you'll you'll probably just see me there posting a lot about uh, rent freezes in New York and California, and getting really really righteously angry from a left perspective, and then making jokes about Animal Crossing for for the foreseeable future. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe you'll catch me live tweeting a movie. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Uh, uh, I'm also on Instagram under the same handle, but that's not as fun. Um, yeah, those are the places to find me for for the moment. And I will keep everyone abreast if I start making other stuff uh, via my Twitter account. Amazing. Um, and, well, I'm hoping you will, when it comes out on digital streaming, uh, live tweet cats as you watch it again. Because Ra- Rachel right. Shank is a fan of the Jellicle Cat. So. I did I did watch it again, and I am, I, am, I am getting prepared to live tweet it because yes, I'm so that excited. watch for me is, was different this time. I don't know what it was. I think it's because I made the mistake of getting the HD copy. And I, it was not a pleasurable experience for me this time. Like, I had so much fun in the theater. Watching it at home, it was very different. (laughs) So we'll see. Well, and was that before they released the article saying that originally they were going to have little digital buttholes? The little digital sphincters like cats normally have? The release, (laughs) the release, the butthole cut. I, listen... I do understand that we do live in the darkest timeline. Um, (laughs) I understand this uh, body and soul, but there is no way that they animated buttholes, then regretted them and then removed the buttholes. I just, I cannot believe this. And if it is true, I will never not think about it. Just someone being like, you know what? This, this like, art dance piece that we're trying to turn into like a weird family friendly comedy needs it needs some buttholes you know how rebel wilson is completely interrupting the rum tum tugger song for no reason we should have more buttholes in that i just cannot believe that they put in buttholes and then removed them i refuse well, i refuse and- to believe it and i do not think it is true well, and I, I like to think that Ray, Rebel Wilson is always just showing her ass on film because I'm kind of tired of her currently. I'm listen. Uh, I'm fine with that. Show your ass all you want, but like, <laughs> don't don't interrupt the rum tum tugger. Thank you. Especially when it's I could listen. To, Jason Derulo has a buttery voice. I could listen to it yes. always. Though he was not right for that role. Um, but but yes, and actually, when this episode comes out, uh, you can also go over and check out Screen Snark. 
on the certain point of view media families network because yes. I will be star I will be guest guesting on that episode. Yes, and you will. On April third, you can check out my main show, which is the Dol- uh, Dolphin Dreams podcast, where Rachel will be guest uh, guest hosting with me as we talk about the Aristocats. Yes, uh, we yeah, so we we are the we are the LSD of podcasts right now. No new friends. We are. <laughs> it's it's so true. Um, though, last question for you. Okay. Because, uh, you know, it is a dark time and yes. we need to find joy. If there is one bit of advice you could get to everyone listening right now, what would that be? Meditate. Just do it. Just like, you don't, you don't have to like be like woo woo about it. Uh, there's lot, there's lots of ways that you can just like pause. You know, um, what I like to do sometimes is called, uh, grounding, um, all you do, like, you don't even need headspace. It doesn't matter. Like, all you do is you just sit where you are. You 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 find five things you can see, uh, four things you can hear. No, wait, four things you, five things. Hold on, let me try this again. I'm going to ruin this whole thing. It's five things you can see, four things you can touch, three things you can hear, uh, two things you can smell, and one thing you can taste. If you just sit and you go through that Five things you can see, four things you can touch that you touch, uh, three things you can hear, two things you can smell, one thing you can taste. That's all. You've meditated. You've done it. Like you've grounded yourself. You've you've meditated. You've given yourself a pause. Nothing nothing matters in that moment. You're just like spinning wheel, microphone, monitor, glass, koosh ball like and you've you've forced yourself to like do this task I also find that weirdly enough when I wash my hands I have found that if I count instead of sing I am meditating uh like I I I do the like lather one two three four five back of my hand one two three four five between my fingers one two three four five because I get too distracted with like the song aspect Mm -hmm. but I have turned washing my hands into a moment of meditation uh that's all. Just like pause. Just like breathe. Take in the space that you're in. Meditate. Like seriously, it, it will it will help calm your your brain gremlins. I love that, Rachel. Thank you so much for being on the show. On our thank first you episode. for having me on the of inaugural course. episode of hopefully a short podcast. For our isolation will end sooner than we think. Thank you for listening to Isolation Cast Voices from Quarantine, presented by Dole Whip and Dreams. You can find us on Facebook at Dole Whip and Dreams Podcast. You can find us at Dole Whip and Dreams Pod.com. You can also find us at Dole Whip Pod on Twitter and Dole Whip and Dreams on Instagram. And find Isolation Cast wherever you listen to podcasts. Now go and find your joy.